Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial with the San Diego Futures Foundation and today we're going to take a look at Audio and Premiere Pro. This is going to be more of a technical tutorial on the tools you have available to you to work with your audio. To begin, I have this interview footage over some simple music. It's a very simple layout. If I hit play, you can see that audio levels start activating in the right hand side corner. This is your audio meter. Your audio meter shows you the levels of your audio as your timeline allows. If we go over here and look at it, you have two sides. The left side is for the left speaker and the right side is for the right speaker. On top, you have your red alerts. This is when your audio levels are too high and they go above 0 dB and these alerts will show up, letting you know that you need to bring them down. On the right hand side, you have your audio gauge levels goes from 0 to negative 60 I think dB down here. If you need more than that you can right click and change the range. Oh actually while you're right clicking, clicking another good thing to have on is your valleys and your dynamic peaks. Uh, what will that will show is if I hit play these yellow and blue lines will start showing up in the audio meters and they will show you the relative high and lows of your audio meters over time. So that's a pretty good thing to have just in case for reference. I really like it. On the bottom you have your solo mute options. These will solo up the channels. Very simple audio meters on the right. Let's look at the audio tracks in the timeline itself. You can edit these tracks just like you edit clips. You can grab the ends, you can trim them, grab the cut tool you can cut them up however you want grab the selection tool grab them move them around you can do everything you can to a audio clip that you can do to a video clip but there are big differences with a video clip when you stack video clips whatever is on top blocks the bottom we all know this but with audios when you stack up audio tracks nothing gets blocked. The top does not block the bottom, the middle does not block the bottom, nothing gets blocked. Everything gets played through and it's bad because it makes everything louder. So that's why you gotta get your audio levels right when you're mixing these levels. So when you have multiple stacked up levels like that, some basic audio tips is that your audio should never be over 0 dB no matter what it is. Everything should not go above 0 dB. If you have simple interview footage like this, a good range to have your interview track is between negative 6 and negative 12 dB. Right here, negative 6 and negative 12. Get your audio interviews to hit this right here. If you have sound effects or music, you'd want that to be hitting around negative 12 to negative 18. You don't want it to overpower the interview footage. And just a tip, when you're recording audio, you might want to record your audio levels just a little down so that you can bring them up in Premiere. It's a lot easier to bring up audio levels than to bring down really distorted audio levels. All right, so let's go back to the audio tracks in the timeline itself. The audio tracks right now are very small and there's not really much I could really, I can't work with this. So what we're going to do is hold shift plus. That is going to zoom us into the timeline and give us some waveforms. Now we are somewhere. Look at these waveforms. Look at these mountain peaks. Makes you want to climb them. All right, let's stretch these out. Give them some room to breathe. Now that we can see the waveforms, we can get to work. Right here in the middle of the audio track, you have this white line. I know it looks kind of invisible, but you can actually click on it and drag it. Now that you can see the line, it is changing the volume of the audio track relative to what the audio was recorded at. So this is called your relative dB. Another way to really have con more control of your audio levels is to go up to your, nope, select your clip first, go up to your clip drop down, 
go to audio options and hit audio gain. Here is a more controllable way to control your levels. Here you can set the gain to a specific amount for that track. You can adjust the gain. This is like the white line relatively to what it was recorded at. But what we're going to take a look at is normalize all peaks. The selected track is the interview. So I don't want it going above negative zero. Why did I say negative zero? There is no negative zero. I don't want it going above zero dB. But I'm just going to like leave it a little room and I'm going to say I don't want it going above negative three dB. I think that's a very good stopping point. I know it's not going to go over zero. It's just going to stop a little bit above that. It's going to set all the peaks to a maximum of negative three dB. If you have music, select those tracks and I would really set those to a maximum of a negative 4.5-ish to 5 dB. Yeah, that's just another more precise way to handle your audio levels. I think that's a very useful tool to use. You should make it one of your normals. All right, back to the timeline audio tracks. Here in this light white line, we can do more than just move it around. If we hold down command, our cursor changes a little bit and turns into a plus sign. It's kind of like the pen tool a little bit. It's going to allow us to add keyframes to the timeline or the audio track. And with this, we can move these keyframes however you want. We could lower the volume. We could raise it in certain places that we need to raise it. We could lower it in places that we need to lower it. Gives us a lot of options with keyframes within Premiere Pro and working with your audio. Another trick that you can do with these, if you right click on the keyframes, you can add Bezier controls. We can add some curves instead of being so straightforward. It's kind of wacky right there. Sounds kind of all over the place. That's something you can do. I don't really do that. I'm going to change these back to linear, make them pointy. All right. Another cool thing about Premiere is that you can also work with audio, do everything that I kind of just went over within the effects control itself of the track. As you can see up here, we, we have the four keyframes that I just added right now in here. Here you have your audio effects panel, your volume, your channel volume, and your panner. The volume right here is this is pretty much your white line in my opinion. This is the same thing. This is going to change your audio levels relative to what your audio was recorded at. Here we have your channel volumes, controlling the volumes on the different left and right channels, and your panner. How much of how much of it is going to come out of the left and right? If we have it 100% to the left, that means all the audio is going to come out the left speaker. If we have it all the way 100% to the right, all the audio is going to come out of the right speaker. So let's keep this at zero for now. You can do a lot of cool effects with that in the future you find something to do with it. I've never really had to use it like that. Another thing I want to take a look at is the audio track mixer. This track mixer look could look a little complicated, could look a little intimidating, but don't be afraid of it. It's very simple to use and it's really going to help you in the long run once you get used to how to use it and work it. What this is going to do is allow you to mix your audio tracks 
a lot of your clips together uh, as a whole. So what you have here are, are your three audio tracks. You have your A1, A2, and A3. These are your channels and here's your master. Oh, your master. Down here is your master track. This is gonna be this one right here. This little number right here, totally unrelated to this, this number here is gonna control your entire audio track. So if I change this to negative 10 dB, what it's gonna do is lower every single audio track, the entire thing, negative 10 dB, what the master controls. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is keep this at zero for now. Leave everything alone, keep it at zero, but that's your master track. Back to the audio track mixer. Here, your audio track mixer. You have your left and right panners right up here. You have your levels. You have your mute, solo, and record tracks. Uh, the record is you want to record like a voiceover or something. Over here, you have your sliders, your relative dB sliders. Remember, these are changing your levels relative to what your audio levels were recorded at. And on the right side, you have your absolute levels. This is what your uh, levels are going to be once you make the relative adjustments, what they are at that point. So if I go over here, if I hit play, you can see the audio levels are activated. You can see A1, A2, and this is the masters. Ooh, and you have the red alerts going right there, and they're super alert, alerting up. They're telling me that it's too loud. And I need to bring these down. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I did. I brought them down. And they, they seem better. But that's not the whole thing. I barely did anything to it. I barely fixed it. That's up to you guys. All right, so that's your audio track mixer. Remember, you don't want them going over zero dB. Your alerts are there to tell you if you have talking head interviews, negative six, negative 12. I mean negative eight, negative six and negative eight. Go between there. If you have music, get those between negative 18 and negative 12. Those are the golden ranges. Remember, relative dB, absolute dB. Learn it. It's going to be very useful for you guys. All right, the last thing we're going to take a look at is how to send your sequence over to <clears throat> Adobe Audition for more controls and uh, more refined. And it's Adobe Audition is a lot harder uh, to use, but once you guys know how to do it, ooh, it's, it's your best friend. All right, we're going to select our audio sequence. We're going to go up to clip. No, no, not clip, edit. And we're going to edit in Adobe Audition sequence. If you had selected a clip instead of the sequence, this clip option would be available to you. So we're going to hit sequence. This dialog box will open up. You're going to give it a name. You're going to pick a place for it. Uh, and you're going to give it some handles. Give it five, I usually give a five second handle for audio clips. And right now I have top and bottom one selected only. These are the ones that you want selected. Forget these middle two for now. For you, what you want is to bring your sequence into Audition to edit it there. And this top box here is gonna export a preview of the video. Audition only allows one video project inside Audition at a time. So what it's gonna do is take all the video sequences here in the timeline and combine it into one single preview video that can be put into Audition. And then the the last box is pretty explanatory. Open in Adobe Audition. Boom. Perfect. When hit OK. You're going to hit OK and it's going to open up in Adobe Audition. What Adobe Audition is doing right now is building the video preview for you.
awesome. Now we have opened up our sequence in Adobe Audition. Sadly, we do not have time to edit and for me to teach you about Adobe Audition. I'm not even that much of an expert on it myself. That is for another video for another day. For now, let's just pretend that I really spiced up this this audio. I mixed it up. It sounds great. Let's get ready to go back to Premiere. We're going to go up to File. We're going to go to Export. And we're going to go to... No, this is not it. This is not it. Is it an edit? Where was it again? Oh, right here. Multitrack. Export to Adobe Premiere. This dialog is going to open up. You're going to give it a name. Give it a, Do the whole shebang here. And what you're going to do is work these options. The first option is to export each track as a stem. What a stem means is that when you export it, your music, your dialogue, and your all your sound effects, they're going to be in separate separate files so that you have you can have full control over each of them individually. This is very popular for the higher end of sound mixing. You, this is for control. For example, if I had a video that had effects, uh, dialogue, and music, and I needed to make a version in English and Spanish. I would keep the music, I would keep the effects, but I'd get rid of the dialogue and I'd change it to English or Spanish. That way I can make multiple versions. The other option is to go down to mix down session to either a mono file, a stereo file, or even a theatrical file, 5-1 surround file. I could do one of these, I could do two of these, or I could do all three of these. It doesn't matter, I could do all of them all. And then once I have them selected, I'm going to hit export. And they're all going to be added to Adobe Premiere. And they're ready to go. And I can just bring them all over to start editing. Alright guys, I think that ends our tutorial video for working with audio in Adobe Premiere. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. See you next time.